They say that living on a boat means doing boat work in weird places around the world. Well, they're right. We are cruising Clacquot Sound on the west coast of Vancouver Island to test oh, our new man. Cummins engines. Let's just call it an extended sea trial. While searching for secret waterfalls and kayaking up unknown rivers, it was time to do our first ever oil change. Was it easier than doing oil changes on the Detroit diesels? Watch to find out. Are you ready for adventure? Subscribe now because we're getting ready for the great Siberian sushi run. I was just looking at the chart and there's this little mark there and this sailboat is anchored near it. So we had to do a bit of investigation. So if I come in here and it's called Kraken Falls and I look up properties, somebody wrote, Kraken Falls is a fantastic hidden a 90 to 100 foot waterfall that feels like it's from another world. You know, we gotta stop. What do you think? You wanna go see the Kraken Falls? I know I do. But it says, if you have the chance to see it, you absolutely should. And getting there is a challenge, which makes this even more special. Um, you can only access it by tender, kayak, or paddleboard at high tide. Oh, it's gonna be so much fun. So after pulling up anchor in Matilda Inlet on Flores Island, we are off to find the secret waterfalls. says we're gonna power cycle the engines and then he just turns them off while uh, you're driving okay. while I'm driving you just turn off the engines Yep. so what do we do I just did a power cycle on in case the settings changes needed a power cycle to engage so we'll see Enjoy your cheers that is perfect timing as we're coming into the anchorage Wu Wei the sailboat is leaving so we should have the whole little anchorage to ourselves so we can go find this waterfall and it looks like you go up that little river. I don't know, this is the whole reason that you get a boat is to go do um, exploring like this, to go find things that no one else can go to. And we get to bring you along with us, which is just even that much better. Let's get in the dinghy and go see what we can see. Thank gosh someone had given us instructions. You go a short distance up river, you'll hear the cascading waterfalls while the dramatic scenery unfolds. Once you see the falls, take the hard right between the rocks and the head to the falls. The depths will increase to 11 to 15 feet. Unfortunately, we did not follow them very well. It's not high tide. Well, he said, I think, where's the south? Oh, there it is. Oh, God. Oh, oh, this. Oh. I'll dry out the boots when we get there. Yep, that's me in knee deep water towing everybody in the dinghy into the deeper areas. Thanks, Blaine. Now we're good. Yeah. Okay, we're good. We just got a few wet feet. It's very Lady Gaga. <laughs> Shallow. Okay, push the bow. I need the bow. Yeah, I was trying to way. get to the bow. 
Eagle blade! No, don't lift high up because it goes into my underwear. <laughs> Woohoo! Okay. That'll be the second time Janice would have had a wet underwear today. <laughs> that one's not as wet. Perfect! Isn't this fun? Come on. No? That's good. It's good. Look at Tangarilla back there. Maggie's like, where can I jump off? Nowhere. As we entered the river, we could hear the crashing water, but we couldn't quite see anything leg, yet. Yeah, there's there's rock right there's a rock right there. Yeah. See this rock? Yeah, it's gonna say to get deep again. As soon as you hear it, take a hard right. Oh, look at it, I can see it. Yeah, I think it's a waterfall on the river. It's hard to not find it. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Oh. Wow. <laughs> what? Yeah, Brian's got oh. a paddle. Not too much. Don't push too hard. Oh man! And soon it was time to head back to the boat because we weren't quite sure if the tides were going up or down. We're growing here, this is crazy. It's pretty special. A lot of people don't see things like that. No. That was so worth the stop to see crack and fall. That was absolutely stunning. What did you think? Isn't that amazing? Like, it's not often you can go to those places unless you hire a boat, you have your own boat, kayak, whatever, because it did get really shallow, but wow, it's like straight up Jurassic Park. Okay, time to lift the anchor and head to our next stop. zigzag all the way through. And that's exactly how we got out of Miller Channel and headed towards Bacante Bay.
So we chartered this out last night and I don't think we realize exactly how narrow that exit is. And Blaine is at the wheel going, making faces and then it's like smile and then he's like yeah we're going right through there that was tight toit toit Blaine that was tight That's awesome. Oh my gosh, look at it from here. Here with the sticks. Do you want me to just jump off the boat onto shore? <laughs> I said I didn't think your gumbles would help get us off the bottom of this time. Oh, that's the exit that we should have taken? Oh, you can. This way was more fun. So, high five doing that. Good job. That was awesome, Lane. A bit tight, but it's it was easy. Just don't go any faster than you're willing to hit something. It's exactly our motto. So we're all about tight entrances. God, that didn't sound very good. <laughs> but anyways, here's another really tight entrance that we're heading through. Um, up into Bacante Bay and supposedly this bay is supposed to be amazing. So you see where we're going? We're pointing right at it. Yep, we are going right through that wee little hole right there. Isn't that crazy? But you know what's even crazier? They're extremely deep because we are in glacial country and what happens is these glaciers and rivers have carved through really deep um, inlets. So that's what makes anchoring, first of all, very interesting up here because a lot of times you're anchoring in like 100 feet of water and you're doing a stern tide ashore. But that's also really cool because these little river like areas that you're going through are just so deep that boats like Tangaroa, not a problem at all because we only take five and a half feet. And after putting out a ratio of 4 to 1, chain to depth, Blaine started reversing the engines and backing down on the anchor. There we go. We're stuck. In Bacante Bay, we could actually feel when the anchor hooked. Did you feel it? How's it going? Pump's not burning. One of the important things of fresh engines is the first oil change. I always do a short oil change. What I mean by that is I change the initial oil well before the typical recommended oil change interval. In this case it was roughly around the 20 hour mark. This ensures that all the assembly lube and any contaminants from the build were removed in a time appropriate manner. Before I started this process however I needed to get an oil drain hose into the bottom of the oil pan on Stella. She went in a bit early and I had not built the hoses yet. The hoses allow me to pump the oil out of the engine without having to leak any oil into the nice and clean bilges. 
to do this, I had to put an oil drain pan under Stella and very rapidly remove the plug and thread in the hose while letting as little amount of oil drain out as possible. Fortunately, this went quite well and no oil made it into my bilge. After temporarily wiring in the pump, the oil gets pumped into the 5 gallon pail. This will all get much easier once I install the oil change manifold donated to us by Troy, who subscribes to our channel. Thanks again, Troy! Once the old oil is removed, I swap out the filter. The nice thing about the Cummins filter setup is that no oil spills out when I change the filter. It's nice and clean. I also pre-filled the new filter with oil before the install to keep the time waiting for oil pressure after startup to a minimum. The Detroits had upside down filters, which did not fully drain, that made a mess whenever you had to change them out. They also had a poorly designed seal setup that managed to cover Stella 1.0 with oil the first time I ever did an oil change on them. It was disgusting. Once the filters are changed, I top up the engines with 3 gallons of fresh Shell Rotella T4 oil. As a comparison, the Detroits required 8.5 gallons of oil on every change, each engine. All in all, the Cummins are much easier and cleaner for oil changes and require considerably less oil. So what did you do when we landed today? Oil change. Oil change. And how'd it go? Your first oil change Good. with the two boats um, or with the two motors? I had to swap over the drain plug on the starboard engine because uh, when we put them in, I didn't have the uh, starboard engines uh, fitting ready. Right. So I ended up putting it on without it. So I just had to do a quick swap on that, which was actually pretty easy. I just put a rough tote or a little tub underneath and spilled maybe half a liter oil as I popped the plug out and put the new one in. Cool. So that's all done now. So now I can just pop them both out all the time. See ya. Peggy's like, ah, it's a seal. Eventually I'll put something in to make it all integrated and easy, but for now. It went off without hitch. Yeah, no so problem. how many gallons did you switch? Did you change over? Uh, they're actually not too bad. So I think now that the engines are full of oil and they're not fresh, uh, they took, because I filled the oil filter too before I put them on, I think it's right at about the 10 liter mark. Well, that's not bad. Now, Which is how many gallons? Liters. I think 12 liters is three. Okay. Um, so yeah, not too bad. So you're happy with how it all went? Yeah. How easy it is it to access now compared to the Detroit? Super easy. Super easy compared oh, to the those, Detroit? Those oil filters on the Detroit's were some of the most poorly designed pieces of garbage I've ever had to deal with. That was such a mess having to deal with those. So you're These happy, happy easy. camper. I can un unscrew the oil filter right off. It doesn't even overflow the top. It just the oil filter comes off, my hands stay clean, I flip it upside down in the bucket with the, the funnel, it drains out, and I garbage it. Now, was it like that, or did you design it that way, or does nope, every Cummins just, come like that? That's just how the, the 6.7s are. Nice. Yep. Makes it super easy, so, and super clean. So really, I don't even have to get my hands dirty with the way the oil change system is now. The only reason why I had to get my hands dirty this time was to swap that plug on the bottom. But otherwise, they pump into a bucket, I pour the fresh oil in through the top, and change the filter, fill the filter up, done. And with boat work done, it was time to do some gunk holing. Can you see the color of this water? It is like dark rust red. And we have no clue why. Stream runoff, algae growth. No clue. I've never seen water this dark red, I don't think. It's a beautiful little anchorage. Here we are, the only one in it. And now you know why we like going to places other than Desolation Sound. There's nobody here. You go to Desolation Sound, there'd be like 20, 30 boats in here. <laughs> in a bay this big? Oh. There'd be more? Oh yeah. Yeah, see? Especially with the ease of anchoring because it's so shallow. 
This is why we come to places oh. where no one else goes. Because we don't have to see people or listen to music or listen to everybody else's generators. And we don't feel guilty running our own generators and disrupting the anchorage because we do feel guilty doing that. So right now we are looking for a place to take Maggie for a pee. That clip is not going to work. That's an otter right there. See the otter? And he goes. So this is the perfect Maggie pee area because we can nose in. She jumps onto the rocks. I'm guessing Blaine's going to nose in right there. I'm actually going to nose in right in the middle here. Really? Yeah, right in the cleft. In the cleft. And then she can jump off and pee. Actually, no, there's not really a place she can jump off there. No, I think this is better right here. Yeah. Unless you want to keep her on this part, then you jump, then you go over there. Oh, true. Yeah, because then she can't get across. Yeah. You see right there? Yep. See the green seaweed? Just to the right of the seaweed. You know, I have to back up a bit more. And if you followed that discussion, we decided to put her to shore on the piece of rock that she could not escape to the mainland from. She's like, let me off! Oh, we're going right here? She's gone. Hey, Maggie. She can't go anywhere. She can't get across to the other side. No? No. For sure? Yep. Perfect. Because look at the cliff on the far side there. It's like inverted. I can't see her. No, she's over on the other. I guess she can't get across. Oh, there she is. She got pee right at the top. Good girl. You want to go right out and then come in to pick her up? Sure. Oh, she wants to come. She's trying to figure out how to get over there. Okay, wait. Okay, come on. Good girl. <laughs> Good girl, Mags. Good girl. That was easy. That was super easy. Okay, yeah, let's go see what we can find. Good girl. Let's see it. Now, if you're wondering what gunk holing is, it's kind of a Canadian term where you take your dinghy or your boat and you cruise in and out of really shallow areas and explore. Big rock if you've watched dinghy. our past videos, we love to gunk hole with the dinghy. It's amazing what you can find exploring the shore of these little coves that we anchor Tangaroa in. <laughs> he just came through there. Look at that tree on a tree like that. Oh, yeah. Isn't that pretty? Totally just chilling there. See that rock? Oh, look at the steel right here. Maggie! As you can tell, no. Maggie thinks seals are a danger oh, no. to us and is constantly barking at them to save no. us. We're just watching this otter. He's so cute. He's got his little feet up in the air. He's just swimming with his arms. You see him? He was so cute. Let us get close. He's a big one. I have not seen otters since we were in Alaska. I have not seen otters Look that. Over the boat. Big splashes. Ah. Oh. That's a uh, seal splashing around out there. But we have not seen otters since we were up in Alaska, and they used to do that all the time: swim on their backs with their feet, like. I don't know, the otters back at home, there must be a different type of otter because they don't do that. These are sea otters. They just float around with their feet up out of the water on their backs. And they actually have pouches in their arms that they carry their favorite rock to break shellfish, which is just, they're just so cute. So that was amazing. I hope I got enough foot. I hope I got the footage I can zoom in and that you see it. So we were going to go in there with the dinghy to see what was there because supposedly there's a river right there or a creek. We hit bottom. 
and you can't even see the bottom because this dark red water visibility is crap like not there four inches <laughs> we never even knew we were coming up to bottom but we hit we're, bottom so we backed really out really slow yeah really slow so we backed out and we are just heading back towards Tangroa but we're going to explore that tomorrow in kayaks and paddleboard but first we had to check the crab trap which of course I put down before we went gunk holing what? hopefully that's not all there's my knot again I don't know how to untie it This is one of the more stunning anchorages I've ever been on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what okay. is up with these tiny wait, ass crabs wait. around here? These are these little green crabs that you're supposed to report. Oh, are they? Aren't those little Japanese invasive green crabs? Uh, they seem to be pretty invasive because most of them in there <laughs> are those. Ah! It's raining crabs! He says, this guy's stuck in the handle. He's like, I just, I see the water. I just can't get to it. But look at these green ones. You guys see those? Here, I'll help you a little guy. Uh, come here. I don't think these green ones are come good. Here. These green crabs are a huge problem in our oceans. It doesn't have many predators, eats a lot, and takes over important habitats like seagrass, which other sea creatures need to survive. Green crabs have been known to chow down on baby king crabs and salmon, which isn't good for those species. They also mess up our eelgrass beds, where the little fish hide from bigger predators, and they fight Dungeness crabs for food and space. It was the Dungeness crabs that we were looking for when crabbing, not these ugly green things. You can't, you can't go that way. You know way. that rock crab is a keeper, there. Uh, I don't think he's big enough. The rocks are a lot smaller. It has to be a lot smaller because that's a small crab. I don't understand the green ones. I don't know. I just understand that they're all over the bottom of the tinder now. That oh. guy doesn't even have claws. He's about. Uh. Okay, why don't you like dump them in? Well. <laughs> just, so they don't keep falling in the tinder. Okay, I got crabs everywhere. You. Uh. This dude get a road. Ow! Don't pinch me! Now, while gunk holing around Bacante Bay, we could hear some huge waterfalls. And of course, we love to find secret waterfalls. So, of course, we decided to fly the drone to see what we could see. We didn't see any waterfalls, but we did see an awesome creek, which we later learned was called Wata Creek, that we decided to head up with our kayaks and stand up paddleboard. We are off on an adventure. I'm on the paddleboard. Blaine is paddling. I'm going to film, bring you along with us, and we are going to go up this river over here. So we've got Tina and Brian in the kayaks. Brian has Maggie, and we're on an adventure. First time. First, oh, I know. It's Tina's first time in a kayak. What do you think, Blaine? She's a kayak virgin. She, she, she was a kayak virgin. And the sun came out and I still can't believe there is no other boats in here. Just us. Which is absolutely insane. So we are heading over. Oh, there's a seal popping up in front of Tina. But you see that dead tree over there? We're going around it behind. Silt under the water. So we've got water and then silt underneath it. You can see it. It's like it is very brackish water though. It's not very salty at all. 
Like that looks like a sandy bottom underneath us right it now. It does look like a sandy bottom, but it's red silt. Let's see if I can capture it kind of like this. Oh, look, it's shallow right there. Yeah, the, um, one of the guys was saying he came in here and it was like well, this too. Well, I just too. hit bottom, so it's shallow. <laughs> okay, that tree is cool. We are going right through there to see what we can see. Can see the rocks we have there. only looked from drones so far. So now we're exploring by land. We're on exploration lane. Yep. We are intrepid explorers going into no man's land that no one's been before. Okay, maybe not. We just dropped Maggie off on shore. She's doing her peeing and pooing and everything. And we're gonna pick her up on the other side of these rocks. <laughs> right, Mags? Maggie, don't get eaten by a bear. Wow, look at this. Then we ran into a little bit of an issue and had to portage, which basically means we had to get out and walk. Maggie. Careful, Brian. Oh yeah, we're walking across all the big rocks. Oh, falling. Should have brought shoes. Always should have brought shoes. See, Maggie Good doesn't girl. like water, so we were extremely surprised that she crossed over the shallow area by herself. Oh, that was an adventure. We had a portage across those rocks right there, and Blaine was the only smart one that brought shoes. <laughs> the rest of us are like, doy. I don't know how much they helped. Look at the difference, like the brown. Oh, yeah. My feet are frozen. The more we went up the river, the more the algae bloom disappeared, and soon we were riding in clear, fresh water. This is the end of it. This is the end of it. But soon we found another blockage in the river and we had yet to find any secret waterfalls. It's up to you guys whether you want to portage again. The water is crystal clear. Yeah, yeah so, so it's just an algae bloom down in the bay. Unfortunately, we had to turn back before finding Maybe the waterfalls. Our feet were freezing yeah. and even yeah. Maggie was too cold to keep Better. going. Sometimes it's just not worth pushing through. Wow, this is beautiful. Mm -hmm. not... What is that? It's a trap or something. I'm gonna get off and look. Okay. Maggie, stay. It's a weight of some sort. It is. It's, it's bolted to the rock. What the hell? But look at. It's, they've got like a steel something bolted to the rock up here. Oh, look it. Oh, it's got a compass in it. Some sort of transmitter on it. I think it's supposed to maybe do the flow of the river. Maybe. So let me show you. Let's put it sideways. It was, it was sideways to the river though. What? It was sideways to the river. Do I put it back over here? Yeah, I put it back there and, and put it there. And then put the holes facing the end of the river. No, no, the side holes. Yeah, like that. That's kind of how it was, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. But it's bolted right to that rock. That's really rusty. Yep. And bolted. That's kind of cool. Somebody's going to come later to pick that up and they're like, who mess with us? Huh. If anybody knows yeah. what that is, we would love to find out. Blaine drove us through a rock field. We can't get out now. <laughs> I took the navigator up front. There we go, Blaine. I chose poorly. Get over in that deep part. Over there. Yeah, I'm there. I'm taking exactly super fun on the feet, you know. <laughs> Push and jump on. I uh, actually don't do that. Then. Oh. Because <laughs> that's how I'm maintaining my balance is leaning on this. Are you on? Oh, I'm on. Oh boy, oh, this is much deeper. Oh yeah. 
Why'd you take us over there? This is the deepest part. Slow, folks. <laughs> Show off. Rub it in. <laughs> we are now portage pros. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, Tide's coming in. Definitely. Oh, so it's going to be a struggle getting out. Blaine, yeah. you're going into the shallow. Oh, there's a shallow spot right there. And soon we came out of the river and headed back to Tongaroa. about because I guess they've redone the whole thing and there's beautiful boardwalks and steps and if you go after 6 p.m. all the tourists are gone so that's where we're heading right now except for except for us we're tourists are we really tourists or are we locals if you bring your own well, home with us technically we live here so yes yeah that's what I'm saying like technically we're, we we are going to live in Tofino Hot Springs for the next two days we're technically temporary locals <laughs> okay let's go to the hot springs we really hope you enjoyed Bacante Bay. If you want to see another video, check out our last one where we explored a hot spring on Flores Island. Also, we have Patreon. If you want to know more about us and see the inside workings of Tangaroa, check it out. Also, YouTube membership. See you on the inside.